What is rope drop and what should you expect and why should you even do it? That's today on episode 44 of the Go Inform podcast. Hey, everybody, welcome to episode 44 of the Go Inform podcast. It's great to be with you again. Um, Today's episode is all about rope drop. And I think this is something that everybody should know about in case you want to put this extra tool in your toolbox for touring at the parks. Uh, My name is Maven. I am the founder and writer and uh photographer and publisher over at goinform.net. And I am here to help you guys have the best vacation ever. And um, theme parks are almost always our top topic here on the Go Inform podcast. And definitely today is a theme park topic that anybody who wants to go like a pro really should know about rope drop. And um even if you know what rope drop is, I got to thinking about some of the um, ins and outs of how to make the most of rope drop and also just what to expect if you've never experienced this before. And I thought it would be a good topic for us to discuss. So here we are today talking about rope drop. I want to take a second um, before we jump into the topic, just to thank everybody for subscribing to the show. I know I'm not publishing very often, and it's great to know that when I do put out an episode, you guys who are subscribing are going to get that right away. And um, so thank you so much for keeping me going with this and for sticking with the show. And um, don't forget that I also do a email newsletter. And you can subscribe to that over on the website over at goinform.net slash newsletter. I'll put a link to it in the show notes as well. And I've been trying to get better about publishing that newsletter about every two weeks. And my goal with that is just to keep it really simple and brief, but to bring you up to date on any news that I think you need to know about um, out there, uh, especially with Universal Orlando and the Disney parks and um, share any tips that I think are going to help you in this specific time of year, um, things that are coming up and that kind of stuff. And it's just a way for us to stay connected um, as we go through the year. So be sure to get over there and subscribe to the email newsletter. Again, that's at goinform.net slash newsletter. Or pretty much anytime you're on the site, uh, you'll see a link to subscribe over there. So um, check it out. And thanks again for subscribing. So today's show notes are going to be at goinform.net slash 44. And um, so anything I'm talking about today that uh, I feel like there's something with more information that I need to link to, um, I will get in those show notes. I'm also going to put some pictures that I have taken at various rope drops. And um, so hopefully that'll help sort of illustrate this a little bit more. So don't miss that. Um, You can click those uh, show notes straight from your uh, podcast app that you're looking at right now, or maybe you're not looking at it because you're driving. So just look at that later. Um, But anyway, make sure you check out those show notes. Okay, so rope drop. So rope drop is a really great pro tip for touring theme parks. Um, Rope drop is something that takes place usually at the beginning of the day only. Um, There are some cases where you might see a rope drop if there's a special event or something like that. But for the most part, this is something that happens first thing in the morning. And rope drop is 
is a great way for you to get ahead of almost the entire crowd in the park for the day and get to see and do things that you might not otherwise get to. Um, Rope drop is the time of day when nobody's in the park but whoever has showed up for this. So, you know, it's the time to get on that ride that you couldn't get a fast pass for, get into that land that's really popular, um, or see something without a gazillion people uh, surrounding it. And um, if you've listened to any of my other episodes, you definitely have already heard me say that I think first thing in the morning is the best time for touring in the theme parks. And rope drop is a huge part of this. And I have mentioned rope drop before, I know. But I just think that it's nice to have a little more of a sense of what to expect when you show up for this. So today we're going to talk about what rope drop is, why is it called rope drop, um, how you can make the most of it, what you should expect, and why I think it's worth giving it a try. So rope drop, the term comes from the idea that um, there is literally a rope holding back the crowd when a park opens. And um, not every park opening is the same. And sometimes there isn't even a rope. Sometimes there's just people holding back the crowd. And sometimes there's no rope at all when you go to um, the first thing in the morning to a park. But often you're going to run into a situation where there's a rope. Now, rope drop also is a verb. And um, so you'll hear people saying, we're going to rope drop that park tomorrow, or um, we're going to rope drop that ride. And um, this is something you hear a lot. So I'm going to use it both as a noun and a verb, and you'll sort of see how it works into the conversation. Okay, so um, just from the very beginning, let's talk about why there's a rope and where it is and and um, where you're going to encounter this. So um, the reason why there's a rope is that the rope is inside the park gates and it is a way for the park to allow guests to get in through the park gates before the rides open and to disperse the crowd a little bit. In some parks, there will be a rope almost just inside of the gate um, when you walk in. So in a park like Magic Kingdom, where um, there's a gate and then there's the train station that kind of blocks the entrance all the way into the park, sometimes you'll see a rope right at the tunnels under the train station. So they can allow the crowd to pass the um, main gate, you know, scan their magic band, scan their tickets, and and get into the park a little bit, and then they will hold the crowd behind the rope right there um, in that kind of main opening area of the park. This is really common, um, and uh, it is a way for them to at least let the early birds get through the gate and kind of get into the park, and it's just that many more people that they don't have to scan through right when the park opens. So um, so that's one example of where a rope might be. But a lot of times, including in uh, Magic Kingdom, there's more than one rope. So, um, you know, what happens is that there are certain attractions in these parks that everybody wants to see. And they're hard to, you know, the lines can be really long later in the day. So the people who want to come early, they have a thing in mind that they want to ride. And um, an example of this is the flight of passage ride at Animal Kingdom in, um, in Disney World. Flight of Passage has been open for several years and it can still have wait times that are hours 
long. It's one of the hardest fast passes to get at Disney World. And so a lot of people are looking for ways to get around waiting in that line. And one of the best ways to avoid it is to be one of the first people in the park so that you can be one of the first in line for that thing and um, ride it before the lines get long. So um, what happens when you've got an attraction like that is that the the park staff will actually make a rope specifically for people who are headed to that ride. So if you show up at Animal Kingdom at Rope Drop, when you pass through the gate, they're going to kind of be (laughs) directing traffic. And they're going to say, if you want to go to Pandora Flight of Passage, go to the left. And if you want to go to, say, the dinosaur ride, go to the right. And so depending on where you want to go, which ride you want to go on, then you're going to go and line up behind that specific rope. In a park like Disneyland or Magic Kingdom, there might be a rope into Tomorrowland for people who want to ride Space Mountain. Um, There might be a a rope into Fantasyland for people who want to ride Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and so forth. So there's not necessarily just one rope that's going to be dropped. And yeah, most of the time there literally is a rope. So um, it's a nice looking rope that they have and it usually has some little flags hanging from it with like Mickey Mouse or or maybe a sign that says don't run. <laughs> and there's um, there's always a few staff members manning this rope at the very from the very beginning of when the park opens. So if you are one of the very, very first people through the gate, you could be standing right up against the rope. And that's a very exciting thing. Thing, um, because you see an empty park with nobody else in front of you, just this rope, um, which is really cool. So because they are lining people up behind a rope, then that allows the parks to open the gates before the official park opening time. So this is a big thing to know about rope drop. Um, Let's say that a park is opening at nine o'clock. Um, they could potentially open the gates and start taking tickets at 830 or even earlier. And then once you get through the gate, you're going to go to the rope and then you're going to wait. And just depending on the situation in the park, you might wait all the way until nine o'clock behind that rope or um, they might start moving the crowd or drop the rope maybe 15 minutes before park opening, maybe a little less. So um, just like I've said before, it's really important to get to the gates well before park opening time so you don't miss out on this stuff. So my advice in terms of when to arrive to the parks has always been at least 30 minutes before the opening time. Um, 45 is better. An hour is really good if you're going to see something that's a really big attraction. This goes for early admission too. So if you've got a park that's got a, a, a regular opening time at nine, but you have access to an early admission at eight, then you really need to be at that park by 7.30 um, or sooner. Um, and when we're talking about this coming fall where um, the Disney parks are going to have really, really early extra magic hours and probably especially big crowds because of the opening of Star Wars land, you know, make sure you really are there well before that announced opening time, because these are going to be popular. There's very popular attractions that people are going to be trying to see. And the earlier you can be there, the quicker you're going to get onto that attraction and onto the rest of your day. And, um, 
Like I said, it's very cool to be at the front of the rope drop. Your experience is a lot different when you're in the front of the rope drop waiting crowd as compared to the middle or the back. So um, do your best to get there early so that you can be part of that kind of early surge into the park. Okay, so now you've made it into the park and you're waiting behind the rope. So let's talk about what happens next. First of all, there the way that the rope works is that there may they might literally just drop the rope and let people walk the rest of the way to whatever it is they want to go to. And so that's just literally well, they don't actually drop it. They kind of wind it up, but still like they basically they let the rope go and you can walk in. And this does happen. I, this is more common at the Universal Parks. Um, the Disney Parks, in many cases, what they will do is instead of just dropping the rope, they will either carry the rope between a few cast members and you walk behind it, or they'll take the rope away and they'll put a bunch of their cast members at the front of the line and you walk behind them. So it's really important to pay attention when this is happening because not only can you get in trouble if you kind of break the rules, um, but also it's a little bit stressful walking in this crowd. So you really want to kind of be aware and be ready when it's time for the crowd to move. So uh, when they decide that they're going to move the crowd, what's going to happen is there's someone up front at the rope is going to make an announcement. And if you are more than like 10 people back, you're not going to hear that. So I'll just tell you what they're saying. They are saying, walk, stay behind the rope, stay in the, they usually, they don't want you up on sidewalks. They want you kind of um, in the roadway or whatever the path. Um, So stay behind where the rope or the cast members are. And um, be careful with your other fellow park goers that you don't, you know, run into them or um, just be nice. Okay. Pay attention. If you are kind of back in the crowd, you might not really realize it. And then all of a sudden, everybody starts moving. And again, this can start happening. They will start moving the crowd often, um, 10 or 15 minutes before the park opening time. So start paying attention. Um, If you've just been kind of sitting on the ground waiting for the rope to drop, um, you, you need to be ready when it starts to move. The crowd that you're in when you go to Rope Drop, for the most part, is going to be pretty experienced theme park fans. So follow their lead, okay? Uh, If you see people start sort of paying attention and looking forward and whatever, you should do the same thing. Um, And, you know, pick up your stuff and make sure you're with your group before you start moving, okay? When they start moving the crowd... It is. It can be the most stressful thing that you do all day in the theme park because you are in a mob of people all excited to go to the same thing, all moving sort of as this sea of people and um it can be uh, it can be a lot and this is another reason that i wanted to do this episode is to let you know what to expect because I am positive that rope drop for some people would just be the worst thing they could ever do. If you don't, uh, if you're like, don't like being in a big crowd of people, you don't like, you know, the feeling of kind of being jostled around or whatever, this might not be for you. Um, Or it might be that part of your group is really gung-ho to do rope drop and part of it isn't. Don't force people to do this um, because it, it it can be super stressful. So um, 
be aware of that. But if you if you're ready and you're and you try to stay calm, this is one of those Zen moments, then it's no big deal. You're going to walk behind this rope for like five minutes. I mean, they usually set the rope up fairly close to whatever that final destination is. And they just are going to walk you that last little stretch so that people aren't running and, um, you know, causing mayhem and all of that. So um, it's not too long. Also, the crowd that you're with, for the most part, is not as big as you think it is. Rope drop is not for everybody. Many people just plain aren't going to get there early enough for this. Um, A lot of people have been to theme parks many times and have never experienced a rope drop. So there, it might look like there's a ton of people in front of you, but the truth is, it's it's probably like a hundred people. And even if you're behind a hundred people. There's no one at that lo- at that ride right now. That means you are only a hundred people back in the line for whatever it is you're doing, which means for the most part, for almost anything you're going to, your wait is only going to be like 10 or 15 minutes at the most to get on that ride. So keep some um, perspective about um, the crowd and about your place in it. Um, Now, when you are walking, so now we're walking with this big group of people, be polite. It is acceptable to weave around in the crowd a little bit. Um, You'll especially see younger, you know, teenagers and stuff doing this. Um, Don't be, you know, don't be pushing people out of the way. Try to just gently make your way. If you see an opening, it's okay to take it, in my opinion, you know, but don't don't push in front of people. Um, The truth is, like, for most most of the time when we are doing a rope drop, my daughter Luna, she like zigs and zags to the crown and I do my best to keep up t- with her. And we still end up in the line, like literally next to the people we were standing by when we were just waiting for the rope to move. So you can do that if you want and it might get you a tiny bit ahead, but you could also just move with the speed of the other people around you and you'll be fine. Now there's a few things to look out for when you are moving through this crowd. Um, Big obstacles are strollers, wheelchairs and those um, electric scooters and um, in the crowd. And then on the edge of wherever you're walking, there's almost always garbage cans, light posts, stuff like that, um, curbs. So be mindful of what's around you. Um, Do your best to like get out of the way of strollers and wheelchairs and scooters. But also like, for me, I really don't want to be caught behind those guys because they, uh, that doesn't look fun to me <laughs> trying to maneuver with those things. Um, they, they have a harder time and they are going to have to slow down. So try not to be right behind one of those things if you can avoid it. Um, but if you go to the edge of the crowd and try to walk at the very outside of it, that's where you're going to have problems because you're going to all of a sudden have to cut back in because there's a garbage can in the way or something like that. So for the most part, I think it's smartest to be towards the center of the crowd side to side and as far forward as you possibly can. I mean, definitely getting there sooner is going to make it easier because you're just going to have fewer people in front of you that you have to, you know, watch out for. Staying towards the middle is also really useful um, because if there's any kind of corners to turn, because when you got a big mob of people and then you have to go around a bend, everything kind of compresses. So you don't really want to be in the elbow of that bend if you can help it. So um, try to stay towards the middle. Uh, the worst, I think, for this, the worst place we've seen has been Toy Story Land's rope drop. And I I know I talked about this in my Toy Story Land episode a couple episodes ago. Um, 
There are tons of obstacles on the way from the main street in Hollywood Studios back to Toy Story Land, and you're going like upstairs, and you know, there's um, there's these huge like posts and stuff, and then you have to turn a couple corners, and so um, if you're doing rope drop there. Try to stay towards the middle of the crowd. And that is also the park where Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is going to be, which, um, of course, is going to be a huge thing to do at Rope Drop. So I don't know how they're going to route the crowd for that, but I think that's probably going to be kind of similar. So if you're in that park, especially be careful about being on the edges and really watch where you're going, because you may be going up and down some steps and stuff. And it's kind of crazy. Another thing to keep in mind with this big crowd moving is to um, keep an eye on your buddies. You know, sometimes I'll just grab Luna's backpack or something it's because she's walking faster than me. So I don't totally lose her. Um, it is very easy to get separated in these rope drop crowds. Um, if you've got little kids, either carry them or put them in the stroller. Um, I, I think having them try to walk in the crowd is going to be chaos. So really, literally hold on to your little kids. Um, if you have uh, kids who are probably going to just book straight up front and lose you right away, then have a plan for that. Um, I mean, it is okay for you to join your friend who's up ahead of you in the line when you get to the ride. Um, usually, I'm like fast walking to try to catch Luna and, um, you know, it's okay. You can catch up to your friends. But you also, if you know that there's some people in your group who are just going to be way ahead of you, then before the rope even drops, have the conversation about what to do in that case. I mean, there's a couple things you can do. They could just go on the ride and you can just catch up to them after you guys have finished riding it and they either go again together or do whatever whatever, do something else. Or um, they can wait for you at the entrance to the ride. So um, it's pretty easy. And it's not I mean, most people aren't going to get stressed out. If you catch up to your friend while you're waiting outside the ride, they've they've already got a spot in line and you're just catching up. For the most part, that's fine at rope drop. But if the line is now going into the building for the ride, then I personally don't think it's cool to be like going inside the building and trying to catch up to your friends and the lines moving. And, and that seems kind of silly. So if the uh, line is moving into the building and somebody in your group is at the entrance, then really the best etiquette is for them to stand at that entrance until you catch up to them. So you can like, if you see them up there, you can walk up to them um, and then go into the building. Um, so they can be letting the rest of the crowd go past while they're waiting for you to catch up. And then you guys can all go in together. So that is another way um, to handle that. Um, but just know that even if you only have two of you, it's entirely possible that there's going to be moments where you are separated in this crowd and you're going to have to uh, have a strategy for how to reunite. And um, if you've got kids along, have a conversation about what happens if you get separated and you really can't find each other. Um, again, I would say at, in that case that um, at, make the plan ahead of time so that it's not like somebody's standing around outside missing their chance to ride the ride and everybody else is inside. But have a plan for where and when to meet so that you you, um, you know what to do in that situation. Okay, and then a couple things about once the rope is dropped. So the so for the most part, you're going to walk behind this rope or these um, cast members or park employees 
for uh, quite a ways. And then at some point, they will just let the crowd go. And they're, they're not going to take the rope right to the entrance to the ride. So um, when they let the crowd go, the number one rule is do not run. If they let that rope drop or they um, say, okay, you guys can go and you run, you're going to get in trouble. Um, I talked about this in my bonus episode that you can find on the Patreon site um, about Magic Kingdom. Um, Yeah. And by the way, you guys, if you want to support the show, I do have a Patreon page. It's at patreon.com slash goinformnet. And that's an awesome way to support the show. And there are actually bonus episodes over there. And um, for for our subscribers, uh, for the Patreon sub- supporters. And um, one of them is about Magic Kingdom and our experience with Rope Drop there last year. And there's a little story in there about what happens when you run. So do not do that. Um, the cast members frown upon it big time. Um, and it's, t- it's not okay because everybody else knows that they need to stay at the same pace and everyone's going to get to the ride. Like I said, you're still going to be one of the first on the ride. You don't have to run. So don't run. And don't try to get ahead of the rope when it's still there either. Uh, the, you know, it's pretty obvious you're supposed to stay behind the cast members as you walk. So don't think that you're going to sneak around the side and like be first on the ride that way. No, that's not going to work. Um, so don't do that. So once the rope is dropped, you can walk as fast as you want right to their ride and right in. And um, you might be the first one on or one of the very first, which is really, really cool. And you'll be off that ride maybe before the park even officially opens. And this is really great too, because now you're ahead of the crowd big time. I mean, you have just ridden one of the top attractions that many people won't be able to ride on at all. Um, You can either get back in the line, which is still probably the shortest it's going to be all day long, uh, and ride the ride again. Um, Some of these rides have single rider lines. So uh, you might ride it with your friend at Rope Drop first, and then um, just go in the singles ride line. And the singles line at the park opening is usually just walk on. So that's another trick to get to ride something really popular more than one time. And then after that, you can go into the rest of the park where it's probably super calm and quiet. So now the most stressful part of your day has is over uh, and you can have like the rest of the park to yourself because most people who are coming in are going to those big attractions and you've already done, you know, your top thing Um right already. And hopefully you've got fast passes or express passes so you can do the other stuff um, later in the day without lines too. So rope drop is really a powerful way to um, get to do things that you might not ever get to do otherwise. So that's what rope drop is. And uh, so next time that you're think talking to someone and they say they're going to rope drop flight of passage, that is what they mean. They mean they're going to show up before the park opens and wait behind the rope and be one of the first people on the flight of passage ride. Um, or they might say they're going to rope drop at Epcot. And that means they're going to be one of the first people in the park at Epcot. I know um, there is an extra factor here, which I haven't talked about yet, which is how in the heck do you get up so early and get to the park and be there for rope drop? And how do you get the rest of your group to do that? Um, That, you guys, is episode 19 master your theme park morning. And I highly, highly recommend that you if you haven't listened to it yet, or maybe you have, but you 
that it's been a while, go back in the archives. Um, I have a whole bunch of tips about how to make your morning easy, how to get up for that rope drop. Um, because you can see, I think it's really, really worth doing. And um, I'm really not a morning person. And I've figured out a lot of strategies over time for how to cope with this. So um, definitely check out that episode um, for some strategies for how to actually show up for Rope Drop so that you can take all of this advice and really put it into practice. Just a couple other notes um, about Rope Drop. Uh, as I mentioned, it might not be for everybody. Uh, it isn't. Um, so if you, especially if you have like mobility issues or um, something like that, that's just going to make it difficult for you to even physically cope with this crowd, um, those kind of things the parks recognize that and they try to make it easy for you to skip lines in other ways. So I'll put a link in the show notes about um, the practices at the Disney parks and the Universal parks for people who need special attention in that area and the how to do that. Um, because there are they really will let you skip lines in a lot of um, different ways. If you have a good reason for needing to do that. So um, so make sure you check into that. And that way you don't have to go through this if it's really not physically a possibility for you. Another thing that I highly recommend as a way to skip the rope drop chaos at the Disney World parks is breakfast. Um, <laughs> yeah, breakfast actually is the way. Um, so if you have a breakfast reservation in the park before park opening time, then that will give you access to these attractions before the park opens without dealing with the rope. So um, I have a whole episode about how to do that. That's episode 27. Um, so uh, so scroll back, uh, check that one out. A breakfast reservation gets you into the park before park opening and allows you to line up for a popular attraction before the rope is even dropped. It is a really, really great hack uh, when it works. And um, so I really recommend that you check that out. Cautionary uh, note about that is is that there are going to be really early extra magic hours in some of the parks at Disney World this fall related to the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And um, those park opening hours are going to be even earlier than you can get a breakfast reservation. It doesn't really work in parks that have an extra magic hour on that day. So... Um, that's just kind of a timely note for you guys traveling in the fall of 2019. Um, and it doesn't apply to all the parks. So do take a look at my advice about that because for some of the parks, a breakfast reservation is still going to be an awesome way to get in before the crowd and avoid rope drop. So keep that in mind too as another um, kind of pro tip for how to avoid that crowd. And do make sure that you have a plan for what you want to do at Rope Drop before you get into the park. Because when you get to the gate and you get through, if there is more than one rope at that park, you're going to have to figure out which one to go to. So um, have a plan before you get to the park of what it is you want to see first, and then you can ask the cast members where you should line up to get to that attraction. Um, or it'll be obvious, you know, like, like I said, like with um, Animal Kingdom, that they're just telling you right out of the chute, hey, go this way if you want to go to Flight of Passage. And um, you want to make sure you line up behind the right rope. So uh, Epcot has several different things that people like to do at Rope Drop, and they are way on the opposite ends of the park. So, you know, make sure you know what it is you want to do first. One of the things that can really help you with this planning are my park tours. So I've got audio park tours of all of the 
Disney World parks, as well as the um, Universal parks, way back at the beginning of um, time of Go Inform podcast. So uh, you guys, those are my first episodes. So keep that in mind when you're listening. But um, those are a great way for you to kind of get a sense of what is in each park, where it is, and um, help to help you decide kind of your strategy for what you want to do first and how you want to tour the park. So have a plan when you arrive um, before you even get to the gate for rope drop uh, so that you you make the most of your time and make the most of, you know, this morning that you have. Okay, well, I hope that this answers any questions you guys have about rope drop. But if not, um, please reach out to me. You can send me a message on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm, uh, I'm go informed net. At both of those places or just search for Go Informed. Um, I'd love to hear from you and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, you can also leave comments in the show notes. Um, the show notes are at goinformed.net slash 44. And um, as you can see, I think Rope Drop is a great way to start your day at the parks. And um, it's really important to sort of know what to expect. So hopefully this is going to help you do it like a pro. And I really thank you guys for listening today. And um, I hope you have a joyous vacation.